Hey guys, welcome back. This video we are going to continue our discussion on data types. So if you don't know what that is, go check out the previous video. <laughs> and if you did watch the previous video, let's dive right in. One classification of data types that you guys are going to need to know about are arrays. Now later in the series, I'm going to have a video dedicated to arrays and a couple videos with working with arrays and all that good stuff. But now I want to give you an introduction because I know you guys are going to run across arrays and I don't want you to have to wait to like video 758 <laughs> to know what an array is. An array allows you to store more than one thing inside of like a group of whatever this thing is. <laughs> so for example, we could have an int array. You can name it whatever you want. And an array is signified with these square brackets. And inside of here, we put some number. So we could put, you know, like 10. And essentially what this is going to do is give us a group of things. Okay, kind of ran out of space there. But each one of these can hold an individual value. Boom. Fit them all. <laughs> this entire thing is great. And it might make more sense if we put an S on it. Great. You could also have arrays of different data types. For example, you can have a character array, and this would look something like this, where each one of these is an individual character. And this entire thing is balloons. Now, there is another data type that every programmer needs to know about, and that is the string. All a string is, is a double quoted sequence of characters. <laughs> I'll just give you an example, it makes way more sense. This is a string. Each one of these is a character. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 characters. So this is a string with 11 characters. And you can literally think of characters being strung together in a sequence. <laughs> well, how exactly is this string thing stored in C programming? Well, it's actually stored inside of a character array, which makes sense because if you think about it, we just have a sequence of characters. Kind of like down here, we could have, you know, I space L I K E space C A T S and so forth. So if we made a variable to store something like I like cats, it needs to be a character array. But this string is a kind of string that has to be terminated. And I'm just gonna scratch the surface of this because we're gonna devote tons of videos to strings later, I promise. But at the very end of the string, you have to put something called a null character, which looks like backslash zero. This is how we write the null character. In reality, the null character is the absence of everything, because <laughs> that's what null means, N-U-L-L. -L. But to tell C we want to put the null character, we would put a backslash zero. And this is interpreted as one character, just like we have the new line character, backslash N that is one character that goes down to the next line. Because of this, the array actually has to be one character longer than what you would expect. So we end up with something like this, where this is the string, and now I'm gonna split the characters. We end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We have an array with 12 elements. Everything inside of an array is called the array's elements. We'll get into strings and arrays more in the future, just introducing it to you guys so you have a rough idea. There is another term you guys ought to know, and that term is constant. Claire. What? What do you want, Claire? Now, there's kind of two definitions of constants. One is where you kind of make a variable, but it's like a variable that can't ever change. And you probably know of those from like science class when, oh, you change this, but this remains constant. That's kind of one definition of constant. There's also another definition, which is just a value. So if we declare a variable, the number of cats I have, this here is a constant. Think of a constant as something you can write down. Usually it's pretty clear, but let's go over some examples of different ways you can write similar constants. For example, you could have this, you could have this, and you could have this. These are three different types of constants that are all very similar but the data type for these are all different. The first is a character because of the single quotes. The next is an integer because there's no quotes. And then the third is a string because of the double quotes. Generally, you don't have to worry a whole lot about the data types of constants. I'm just trying to give you some extra detail. For example, in this situation, this is interpreted as an int, but let me give you 
And another example. Let's say we do something like float cats equals 98.5. Well, this brings up an interesting point because this constant here is actually a double data type. We don't really have to worry a whole lot about that because we're assigning it to a float. So we get the expected value of cats being a float data type that has the value of 98.5. But sometimes you wanna be very, very specific and that might come up sometime in the road down the future. If that does come up, there are certain things you can do to be very specific on the data type of a constant. If you wanna be specific and say this is a float, you can do things such as adding an F to it. Now, this is a float constant. I'm getting into a little bit more detail than you need for right now, but that's fine. If this is something you guys need to know more about, go research it, read some books on it, or ask some questions or ask me some questions. But for now, I think I covered the topic. Good enough for now. <laughs> so thanks guys, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.